Yeah, I think so many of us uh, during our lifetimes have come to expect so much of the court because we saw the court deliver in circumstances that proved the court's integrity. The Republican President Richard Nixon proved the Supreme Court's integrity, and now former Republican President Donald Trump has disproved it. Uh, Andrew, that, that, it, without that Supreme Court decision in the Nixon case, uh, we wouldn't be sitting here so stunned tonight as we, as we are. Yeah, look, as we talked about off air, in many ways, this decision sort of quietly reverses the entire logic of the Nixon tapes case, um, because you have this broad um, recognition by the Supreme Court that anything that is within a very expansive view of the core functions or the take care clause of the Constitution um, is completely and 100 percent absolutely immune. And then even other official acts, there's a strong presumption um, where the court sets out a very difficult test to allow the government to go forward. But let me just make a, sure people understand, with respect to that core function where the court says it is absolutely immune, they say one of the things within that core function is the communications and the directions of the president and the Department of Justice. So they say that when a president orders sham prosecutions, he can do that and not face any criminal repercussions. Just that is just to say it is to be shocked by it. Um, I am completely with Neil. This is this is this is such a transformational um, decision. Finally, the the um, tape that you played of President Biden is so remarkable because you have the sitting president saying, "I do not want." that power. I should not have that power. That is not how our system works. The sitting president is saying this is not part of the checks and balances that we have in this country. We are not an autocracy. It is remarkable, just as an institutional and historical matter, that you have President Biden on the day of the decision saying, I do not need and I should not have that power. Uh, Melissa Mari, you, you clerked for uh, Sonia Sotomayor. She made the point uh, in her dissent that every president prior to Donald Trump, every one of them assumed that criminal law applied to them, every one of them. Uh, they were not inhibited in any way as presidents, uh, as law-abiding people are not inhibited uh, by the fact that law applies to them. Uh, how do you think uh, Justice Sotomayor... Uh, has, has been dealing with this opinion and the length of time it took to get it out. What, what was going on? It, what can you imagine going on inside the court to take this long? Well, Lawrence, I don't think we have to imagine it. I think she told us a few weeks ago when she received the Radcliffe Medal in Cambridge, Massachusetts, where she said that there are days where she goes back to her office and she cries. Um, cries because this court, of which she is a member, has done something so shocking, so beyond the pale, that it beggars belief. And I, I think this is one of those days. She chose to read her dissent from the bench. Again, that is an unusual step that they take only when they feel that it's really necessary to impress upon the public how monumental the majority's views are. Um, she also, I, I think, quite rightly noted that this is a major hit to democracy. And she noted that she did not respectfully dissent. She simply dissented, noting the bad and sad times for democracy ahead. I wasn't entirely shocked by this decision. This is a Supreme Court that has had a six to three conservative supermajority for about four years. And in three of those four years, it has overruled a major precedent every single year. Dobbs in 2022, the affirmative action cases in 2023, the Chevron case this year. And now it's essentially abandoned Nixon versus United States. It's not done so explicitly, but mm -hmm. this is a sub rosa overruling of Nixon. Who would have ever thought that we would be in a position like this, where the Supreme Court of the United States, so emboldened by its mere numbers, could simply run roughshod over the rule of law, over stare decisis, over existing precedents? That's what Donald Trump put in place. And I agree with Neil. 
I am surprised the Biden administration has not taken a more strident view about this court and its role in constructing the current landscape that we live in. But this is not just about the threat that Donald Trump poses to democracy. This court by itself is an existential threat to democracy. Hey there, MSNBC fans. I'm Luke Russert, and be sure to join me, Rachel Maddow, Jen Psaki, Lawrence O'Donnell, Steve Kornacki, Joy Reid, and many more September 7th in Brooklyn, MSNBC Live Democracy 2024. Click on the link for ticket information. We will see you there.